let us back here they banned jelly beans from the studio um i think that's just a strong suggestion mel there are signs everywhere in the studio with their face on them it clearly says don't allow mel to have jelly beans in the studio um mel is actually a very popular name and i think that face on the sign is actually a bubble guppy okay mel who Anyways, we would have Sierra here to say it's been another wild week at Go High, but Tuesday was her birthday, so... Wow, it can get less funny the more you say it. Um, oh, she's growing up so fast! Well, anyways, I was going to make a really corny video with embarrassing baby pictures of our little bread snatcher, but we just don't have the funding to afford the video editing software. So our uh, lovely Picasso over here drew some pictures, and don't worry, um, I will provide the music for it since, you know, I did play Moses at the church musical when I was like three. I prepared for this day for my entire life. Oh, I can't. There. Age one, she stole her first bread out of the womb. So emotional. Age two, she stole her actual loaf of bread. Age three, she stole, look at her, she stole two big loaves of bread. God, why didn't I bring the Kleenex? It's beautiful. And then she started to turn into a huge piece of bread. Age five, she became the bread. Wow. We're so proud of her. Sierra, if you're watching out there. This was for you. You make us so proud. We love you, Bread Snatcher. Anyways, like everything at Go High, I guess I'll just have to pick up the slack and update you guys on what we've been up to. <clears throat> Monday, we had off for the festivities. Go High's had a barbecue that I had to find out on Facebook. So, uh, how was that barbecue, Gianna? I had to eat salted crackers alone. That's not my problem. The food tasted better without you. Anyways, uh, we came back to work and had a lot of meetings about, well, you guessed it, obtaining a building. And guess what? We still don't have a building. I don't know why. We're great people. We're potty trained. We don't smell bad. And we only steal food from your events sometimes. And we're up to date on our shots. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Anyways, I would go more into detail about all the other stuff we did, but my days are starting to intertwine. So we'll fast forward to last Friday. We had interviews with new interns at the library. Mel, you went outside? Wait, wait, did you say you went to the library? Gianna, I told you about this. We can talk about my lack of a life later and not on air. But yes, I do go to the library sometimes. I can't constantly go to Starbucks. They start judging me after a while, okay? <sighs> Anyways, the interviews went great. We actually hired three new interns. Weren't there more youth that wanted to join? Yes, but we're actually running out of space. It's hard to run out of space when you don't have any to begin with. Anyways. We're so happy to have new people to torture. Don't you mean talent? Anyways. Sure. Moving along. <sighs> Look. <laughs> well, we'd like to give a short, a short intro of all the interns, but then we wouldn't have any material for next week, so moving along. <laughs> Saturday, we had our Alex and Ani fundraiser. It went great. And that's saying a lot because I have high expectations for myself. So, anyways, I got this really great new bangle I would show you, but um, on the way here, I realized when going over the script with Gianna, I forgot the bangle, so now I don't have another joke to tell, and this is just, you know, yeah, fabulous. We were gonna, yeah, we were gonna have this whole entire yeah, gag, we're like, M for Mickey D's, and, and um, now it's just a really awkward space in the script. We're just trying to fill time. Yeah, um, but anyways, hey, look on the bright side. Now, uh, Miss Ginny can finally stop butchering the name Alex and Ani. She called it, what, avocado? Auntie Ams, Alex and Amy. Alex and 
and why she mean she yeah. Alex and Amazon Antarctica everything everything Anyways, we'll be having another one at the end of the summer. So, yeah, we also have pictures up on our Instagram. At Go High Corp. Also on my Instagram, too. Feel free to follow me. No. Please? No. Didn't happen. Anyways, Monday, a friend of mine that I met through Press Play, which is a YouTube tour. Wow, exciting. I know, just trying to fill up this airtime. Am I right, ladies? Nobody cares. I know. Anyways, he came up or down, around, inside out. I don't really know about Virginia geography or any geography. Gotta love that public school education. Um, anyways, for that matter, he came down to record a song with us, with Will from our music department. I know, wow, shocker. Recording a song with the head of our music department. He did a mashup of all the hit songs from the summer of this year. Anyways, after he recorded it, he went to film the music video with myself and Bailey. Turned out really well if I do say so myself. You would say that, wouldn't you? Anyways, feel free to check that out. I retweeted all the links on our social media. At Go High Corp and at GoHighCorp.org. I swear if you plug your social media one more time. Okay. So yeah. Wednesday we had some meetings, but nothing much happened. So to spare the mercy of our viewers, we're just gonna skip over that, so. Anyways, yesterday Bailey dropped by to work with, wow, you guessed it, Will from the music department. To work on, wow, you guessed it, music. Amazing. Later that evening, we had a social networking event. Wow, me, the social media person, going to a social event? Wow, shocker. Anyways, it was Network and Nibble. All of us went, even Tyler came up, down, around, geography. Not my niche. I can tell. I won't quit my day job. Anyways, he came to perform. It went great. It was fun. There were cake pops. I didn't get a cake pop. I'm sorry. I thought it was a lollipop. I just put the whole thing in my mouth. I would have half seated it with you. I'm sorry. There's always next month. Keep it going. And today I've been up since, well, Wednesday. It's been a rough day for us at Go High, but we're here now, right? What have you been up to today, Gianna? Well, I mean, for a complex individual such as my... No, I'm just kidding. I cleaned my room, guys. Wow, I'm so proud of you. Good job, Gianna. <sighs> well, on that note, now we'll be taking a commercial break, and we'll be back with our special guest, Jean Rossi. Thank you. 
How are you? I'm good. <laughs> well, welcome to the Q&A. I supplied about 15, maybe 21 questions for you okay. to answer. Okay. So, first one. How would you summarize the Republicans' current stance on the Affordable Care Act? Oh, my goodness gracious. Um, <laughs> outrageous, uh, imbecilic, uh, nonsensical, um, and those are, those, those are its good qualities. Um, let me tell you why the Affordable Care Act is very important to me. Um, I'm a medical survivor. Um, my uh, daughter, Lee, is also a medical survivor. And, uh, you know, from 2009 to uh, 2013, we both went through some uh, tough, tough waters medically. Uh, but we are survivors, and we were very lucky. Uh, we had health insurance, Blue Cross. and. Uh, through that process, uh, the uh, Blue Cross program uh, paid a lot of money to uh, cure us. But we did have some residual bills. And through that storm, I realized that I couldn't imagine uh, individuals who did not have insurance. So let's now talk about the Affordable Care Act. Uh, I, I think it's one of Barack Obama's greatest achievements um, when the history books are written uh, 10, 20, 30 years from now. Uh, it will be the uh, the shining um, the shining uh, jewel on his crown, if you will. And uh, what the Republicans are doing is they're trying to dismantle it in a way that doesn't make it better, but makes it much worse. And there's CBO reports and things that have come out that 20 million, 30 million, we've lost track of how many people will lose insurance uh, under the Republicans' plan. And the last thing I want to say about it is the process that they're using uh, on Capitol Hill is one of exclusion. Uh, Republicans are meeting behind closed doors. They're not providing drafts of the bills that are going to be presented or the amendments. And uh, the Democrats are being left out in the cold. That's not how you achieve um, good legislation. So. Uh, in a nutshell, I'm very disappointed, and uh, but I'm I'm hopeful that we'll amend the Affordable Care Act uh, and not replace it. Wow. <laughs> was that too long of an answer? It was perfect. It was. Yes. Oh my God. I agree with you. I like going on shows where I give perfect answers. <laughs> Okay, next question. Virginia is a state with a death penalty. In regards to William wow. Morva, a w recent convict that has been suffering a mental, wow, <laughs> with mental illness yeah. had been executed. Despite that fact being overlooked in this case, if you could change something in order to make the laws more suited towards a man of William Morva's circumstance, how would you do it and why? My goodness gracious. I was a prosecutor for the United States Department of Justice for almost 30 years. I tried probably uh, 110 cases, 110 trials. I probably had more trials than any federal prosecutor in the history of the Department of Justice. I supervised and managed attorneys that worked on death penalty cases. Here's what I feel about the death penalty. It should be used in the rarest of circumstances. There are individuals who, when they are in prison, continue killing. So there's just no alternative. But let me talk about William Morva. And I want to speak to Governor McCall. You have done some great things for the Commonwealth of Virginia. Some great things. And I have a lot of respect for you. But with the utmost respect, I think, sir, that you made a very bad decision. And good people can make bad decisions. And here's why it breaks my heart that at 9 o'clock the evening of July 6th of this year, the Commonwealth of Virginia took the life of William Morva. And here's why I'm very upset about it. He had, throughout his early years, uh, challenges mentally. 
And in high school, junior high, um, you could see the beginnings of his decline mentally. After he got out of high school for about four or five years, his mental health situation deteriorated greatly. He lived in the woods in the wintertime. He slept under leaves. He ate pine cones. He had a delusion, a disorder, where he thought that individuals were trying to kill him. He had delusions that he was representing Native Americans. In sum, William Morva was seriously mentally ill. And what happened was this. He committed a robbery, attempted robbery, and he was incarcerated awaiting trial. And while he was in the Montgomery County Jail on a state charge, he thought in his delusional state that the prison officials were trying to kill him. He thought everybody was trying to kill him. He got out, escaped, and two horrific murders occurred, both law enforcement, a deputy sheriff and a security guard. Horrible crimes. But here's what happened with William Morva. He went to trial. A jury convicted him on the guilt phase. And in any death penalty case, you have a penalty phase. And here's why what, what happened to William Morva on July 6th is an outrage. At that trial, the experts did not present a sufficient case about William Morva's health mentally. In fact, the experts who testified sort of downplayed his odd behavior. Well, it wasn't odd behavior. He had a serious mental disease. He was sentenced to death because the jury did not get the complete picture of his mental disease in his life. Fast forward to 2014, after appeals were running their course, a federal court appointed an expert to analyze William Morva. That psychiatrist concluded that William Morva was incompetent to represent himself or help himself on appeal. Fast forward to July 6th. His mental condition didn't change. And why I think Governor McCall, for whom I have a lot of respect, made a bad decision, is that the United States of America, the states in the United States of America, should not be executing a man who has serious mental challenges. And the Supreme Court has held that you cannot execute a juvenile, a kid, and you cannot execute somebody who's mentally retarded. Now, he wasn't definitionally mentally retarded, but he had a serious mental health disease. Here's the changes I would make if I were governor or lieutenant governor. And of course, I ran for lieutenant governor and lost in a primary. We should never execute a man with serious mental health issues. Never. Because that serves no purpose. William Morva, the people supporting his clemency, we were asking for him to spend the rest of his life in jail, plus mental health treatment. That's the way you handle a case like William Morva, not by execution. You can ask me a question. What will, we, what will you be doing to change since with your experience with this particular case, what will you be doing now to change from these type of cases reoccurring? Will you be doing anything? Yes, I will. Um, and I'm now free to do whatever I want because I've, got, I've retired from the Justice Department. I'm a failed candidate for lieutenant governor. I did my best. I left it all on the court. But I'm very passionate about this issue. Of course, health care is another one. But on the death penalty, no state should allow a person with serious mental health issues 
to be executed. And the state of Ohio, I think, has passed a law that says you cannot execute a person with mental health issues. Mental retardation is a high standard, if you will, um, and the Supreme Court says you can't execute somebody who has that condition. But what if you are somewhat below that? You're schizophrenic. You're delusional like William Morva. We should not be executing an individual like that. And I'm not downplaying what he did. He killed two people, two law enforcement. I worked with law enforcement for almost 30 years. They are some of my best friends. And it breaks my heart that those two individuals, those two law enforcement officials, passed away. But two wrongs shouldn't be answered with another wrong. Three wrongs don't make a right. But I'll be lobbying for a law like Ohio. I'll also be lobbying, if you will, to make it harder to get the death penalty. Maryland and some states, I think, have statutes or procedures where if the government is seeking death, the quality of evidence that the prosecutor, and I was a prosecutor, the quality of evidence that the prosecutor has to present to the jury has to be of a higher quality. It can't just be verbal testimony. It has to be corroborated by DNA, forensics, because when you are taking somebody's life, that decision is irreversible. William Morva is dead. We cannot bring him back, but his spirit will live on. And I wanna use his spirit, if you will, to change the law on how and when and whom we execute. Okay, to soften the blow, I have a couple of tongue-in-cheek questions. Yes, This please. is getting really serious. Yes, right? <laughs> All right, simple question. Where were you born? Oh, that's an easy one. Of course. I was born and raised uh, most of my early years in uh, Middletown, Connecticut. And uh, it's where uh, my three brothers were born. And it's where my parents, uh, my father and my mother are, are buried. Um, and... Um, it's, it means a lot to me. We, when I uh, was born for the, about the first uh, four or five years of my life, uh, I lived on a farm uh, that was also a, a lumber yard. And uh, I grew up in a, you know, a loving home. My mother was a, a Italian to the core. My father was too. All my grandparents were Italian immigrants. And uh, I was born in Middletown and lived there on a farm, dairy farm in a lumber yard uh, for the first five years of my life. And then we moved uh, to a, a suburb, if you will, uh, even though Middletown is tiny. We moved to a town about five miles away after I was four or five. You're so good at this. I is this good? Is yes. this good? Are you sure? Yes, oh, I'm good, sure. good, good, good. All right. I see Mel, she smiles. So. <laughs> Mel, am I doing good? Yes. Uh, I love you too. I love you too. How Can I get you? a CD of this? Yes, okay. you will definitely get a CD of CD, this. CD, DVD, I don't know the difference. <laughs> okay. I still use a manual typewriter. I'm joking. I can actually believe that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that hurt my feelings. Oh, gee. <laughs> I mean, it hurts your feelings. Not on live TV. Maybe hey, after can I show. give a shout out? My, my 90210 sons, Will <laughs> and Jack Rossi, are here. Okay? Uh, and uh, I'm very happy that they're with me. My wife, Diane, uh, she's home. I hope she's watching. Uh, our daughter, Lee, uh, I don't know where yeah. Lee is, but I'll do a shout out to Lee. <laughs> Come back, Lee Rossi. <laughs> You're never, hey, hey folks, you, Mel, you're never going to get a, a guest like me again. I know. I know. You know that. I know that. You know that. You're my uh, oh my God. That's my middle name. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what camera should I look at? That one? <laughs> hey, hey, folks, if you were bored this Friday night, there's no way you're going to be bored watching this show, okay? <laughs> 
Jean. Oh my gosh. Okay, next question. All right, what camera should I look at? All of them at once. <laughs> you can do it. I believe in you. <laughs> All right. What made you decide to go into politics? Um, I'll tell you exactly. Um, when I was uh, in college, um, I took a lot of political courses. I went to Fairfield University. It was a Jesuit school in Connecticut. And uh, I had a political science course, and I started reading about John F. Kennedy. And the first political book I read, uh, and I, that's when I probably became addicted to it, uh, I read uh, Making of the President by Ted White, 1960, a phenomenal book. And I can remember reading that book and just being captivated by the political process. And then I read uh, uh, John F. Kennedy's uh, Profiles in Courage. Uh, and those were two of the books that sort of um, gave me the uh, desire to get into public service. It appears we have a call. Do you need my oh. answer on the phone? It's right there. Do I pick it up? How do I answer? You can pick it up. Oh. Hello? <laughs> no, 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 no. I thought we had to call. <laughs> what are you mean? Oh, ah, there we what, go. What do I do? Hit speaker. Where's the speaker? Oh my God, Gene. I can't see it. Oh. The last one at the end. The last one at the end. That one. Hello. Uh, that was me. Is that? Is that Gwenny? <laughs> we're ha hey, we're having a lot of fun here. <laughs> I'm Gene Rossi. What's your name? You don't have to say your last name. What's your first name? <laughs> when? How are you doing? Oh, I'm I'm doing good. I just want to tell you, I'm watching the show tonight on a Friday night, and um, you're not a boring speaker. I am a boring speaker? No, you're not. Good. Uh, you give out a lot of good information. Yeah, good. And I agree with you about um, people with mental health issues should yeah. not be um, um, killed. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I agree. Um, so let's see. Let me think of a question I can ask you. Uh, don't you think the work that these kids are doing for this organization is great? I think, uh, let me tell you something. Uh, Go High is phenomenal. Uh, they are great kids. I am honored to be here. And you, and you, you folks better invite me back, okay? Uh-huh. I was going to ask you. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. I was going to ask you, too. Uh, I know the project that that group is working on right now is to open up a center for the arts here in Richmond. And I know that's something that the kids really need here. And uh, they're really having trouble with getting a building uh, donated. Uh, is there anything that you could do to help that? Well, uh, after this program's over, I'm going to help them get a building. How do you like that? Yay! Praise, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Uh -huh. Well, I enjoyed talking with you, and thank you so much for coming on the air. Oh, did you find it? Did you find it entertaining? Did I find what? Did you find this show entertaining? Oh, yes. It's very good. good. And it's uh, so full of life and everything. I, I really like that. Oh, good, good. Well, Gwen, thank uh -huh. you so much for calling. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have bye -bye. a good one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That was fun. I love Gwen. <laughs> was it, it was Gwen, right? Yeah, it was Gwen. <laughs> that's, that's what this is about. Do you know, did you know the caller? That's yes, the as soon as we heard the voice. We that's your mom? mom? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> oh, she's amazing. No, that was not your mom. That was a, a real call. <laughs> <laughs> we have real viewers. We, we do, we do. It's not just family and friends, it's real wow. people. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> oh, All right. I'm going to keep throwing non serious questions at you because this was. <laughs> I'm a non serious guy. Oh, I don't know how you just turn on the politician switch. You go to a goofy dad, the politician, really I'm, quick. I'm, I'm, I have a Peter Pan complex. <laughs> Let's put it that way. That's I'm, a young, I'm, I'm a 10 year old at heart. Oh. <laughs> 10 year old at heart. Okay. 
<laughs> Next question. How was your previous job? Um, oh boy, that's a great question. Um, oh. My previous job was, uh, as I said, for 30 years, almost 30 years, I was a federal prosecutor uh, with the Department of Justice. And um, it was probably the greatest job I will ever have. No offense to being lieutenant governor or governor. Um, if I could have afforded it, I would have uh, worked for free. That's how much I love that job. And um, I did it from 1989 until July of last year. I uh, trained about a thousand lawyers, um, many of whom are in the news, uh, people that have been elected to Congress. Uh, my, one of my opponents uh, uh, was someone whom I trained uh, as a lawyer, young lawyer, uh, when I was uh, in the U.S. Attorney's Office. And uh, it was just the greatest job in the world. And here's why. I never cared about winning and losing. What I cared about was whomever I charged, I always tried to make sure that justice was done. And if I got a conviction, fine. But if the person was acquitted, that's also fine, because justice was done. The people have spoken. And in the, uh, in the Department of Justice main building uh, at um, 9th and Constitution Avenue in Washington, D.C., the fifth floor is where the Attorney General has uh, her or his office. And as the Attorney General walks out of her office or his office, in this big, beautiful rotunda is etched into the into the stone, the following quote, the United States wins its point whenever justice is done its citizens in the courts. And what that meant to me is as a federal prosecutor, litigation and trials are not about winning and losing. It's not about trophies on the shelf. It's about not, not about notches on the belt. It's not about scalps. It's about making sure that that person against whom you're bringing a charge or a lawsuit gets the full benefit of the justice system. And I don't want to harp too much. Well, you can't harp too much on it, but that's what troubled me the most about William Morva. That's what bothered me the most. I believe in my heart that William Morva did not get the full benefit of justice before he was executed on July 6th. And that really breaks my heart. Oh, Jean. Next question. <coughs> I'm crying. All right. One of your issues was minimum wage. Can you explain why? Did you have a bad experience as a retail worker or something? My minimum wage? What do you mean? Well, Hugh, one of your issues was minimum wage for working Virginians. I, I, here's what I feel about the minimum wage. I, I supported and I still support a living wage. $15 an hour, $14 an hour. And here's why. The minimum wage, I feel, provides dignity and respect to those workers who have two, three, sometimes four jobs uh, at one time, and it, 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 is, it is not only smart economically, it's smart morally. Let me talk about the economics. I grew up in a small lumber business. I mentioned that I uh, was born and raised for a while uh, in Middletown, Connecticut, and my dad, uh, he had a lumber business and a dairy farm. But he had to sell the dairy farm to get money for the lumber business. So. Growing up, I was around lumber guys, um, the lumber yard. And uh, my dad died when I was 10 and left the business to my mom and my, my three brothers and myself. And we ran the lumber business uh, for many years before I went on to law school. And here's what I learned about a wage, a decent wage, a living wage. When you give a decent living wage to a worker, you are not only investing in the future, you're not only establishing a stable 
labor force. You're giving that person dignity and respect so that they can support their family without having to go into, into um, uh, social services or become homeless. So the living wage is not only economically smart, it's morally smart. So I support it strongly. Okay. Next question. The opioid crisis is a serious one. Mm -hmm. However, which area of Virginia would you say is affected by it the most? And how would you renovate, for lack of a better term, said area? I would say that the rural, 90% of Virginia is rural. And there are parts of Virginia that um, are more rural than others. I would say the farthest southwest part of Virginia, Lee County, Wise County, Scott County, Tazewell County, um, those, those counties and others um, are des being decimated by the opioid crisis. And a lot of it has, a, a good portion of it has to do with um, the coal industry has, has dissipated, if you will, and has not been as productive as you know, 10, 20, 30 years ago. But a lot of the individuals were working in the coal industry and they were developing um, physical ailments. They were taking pills to kill the pain because they had to work. Well, when you take um, pain pills, the side effects are dependence and addiction. And the rural counties seem to have a higher rate of people who are addicted and overly dependent to the oxy pills. Let me tell you about what I did as a prosecutor. For, from 2002 to July of last year, I led the largest federal and state investigation into the opioid crisis in U.S. history. It was called Operation Cotton Candy. And what we did was we focused on doctors, pharmacists, and medical professionals who were crossing the line and issuing opioids in an illegal manner most of the time for profit. Because a pain doctor, a doctor runs a pill mill, they are issuing prescriptions like candy, Operation Cotton Candy, and they are making money often on the issuance of those prescriptions and creating hopeless addicts. So I dealt with those individuals who were drug dealers in my view, but I also dealt with the addicts, the people who were overly dependent. And here's what I learned from all that experience. Addiction is a disease, and mass incarceration is not to cure. We are not going to arrest our way out of the opioid crisis. The way to get out of this crisis, or to mitigate it, to make it less severe, is we have to address the underlying causes of addiction, because it is a disease. And we don't need to put people in jail if they have this a disease. What we need is to provide them mental health counseling, mental health services, and programs that help get them away from that dependence and that addiction to opioids. So um, that's what I would do on the opioid crisis. All right, final question. <clears throat> Public God, this went by fast. <laughs> I know. Oh, man, you don't even have Okay. Next question. Public reform in the legislature seems to be all the rage. In addition, hospitals seem to luck out, or so to speak, with current reforms. COPN apparently limits the hospitals to require better equipment for the patients. How do you feel about that? Could you repeat that question? I didn't hear the beginning. I'm sorry. Public reform in the legislature seems to be all the rage. Yeah. In addition, hospitals seem to luck out, or so to speak, with current reforms. COPN apparently limits the hospitals to acquire better equipment for patients. How do you feel about that? Well, here's what I feel about the, 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 the public health system. Um, it is in need of repair in Virginia, if not in other states. And one of the things that I talked about on the campaign trail, and I still talk about, is we need hospitals, it goes back to the opioid crisis, we need hospitals in those rural areas of Virginia because people are not being treated for diseases that in Northern Virginia and other parts would be treated on a regular basis. 
and I want to focus on the Medicaid expansion programs. In Virginia, we should expand Medicaid. There are 400,000 individuals in Virginia, working poor, veterans, homeless people, who could avail themselves of medical care if we expanded Medicaid. Not only would that help those individuals who get the program's benefits, it would also create jobs, 20, 30, 40,000 jobs. But most important, that Medicaid money, which is about $8 billion to $10 billion, that we have not taken, and it's in the Department of Treasury, in a figurative drawer. That eight to $10 billion could be used to expand hospitals, to build new hospitals, and help improve the public health system in Virginia. It's a good deal. All right. Well, we'll be taking a commercial break, and next up will be Mel with a very special activity for you. Oh, for me? Yes. Okay, good. good.
Headbands. If you don't know what headbands is, well, apparently you've never seen Ellen. Um, yeah, I'm not allowed to play Be Boozled again, so it's what we're doing. Do you realize how stupid and ridiculous I look? <laughs> and my two sons are right there, the 90210s. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Maybe they won't put it on their Snapchat. <laughs> anyway, are you guys taking a photo of this? Oh, okay. yeah. So you're going to explain the story. Yes. Okay. okay, so you'll go first. So you yeah. have a card on your head, and yeah. I'm going to act and try and, like, charades it. Yep. And then when you, and I'll time it. And yeah. you have as long as until the timer is out sure. to guess, and then you'll put a new card up, and we just keep going. And okay. then I'll go. Don't. It's like team building. I'll do two cards, and you'll do two cards? Is that no, 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 just as many as you can get. We'll see who can oh, get the most. Oh, yeah, it's oh, like, oh, my God. But there's, I didn't bring a prize. Oh, okay. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a level of TV host okay, yet. I'm okay, sorry. Okay, okay. Maybe I'll get better. Okay. Okay. Are you ready? I'm, gonna... I'm ready. Okay. Ready. Let's go. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm very mammal competitive. Easter. Mammal Easter. Um, Bunny. Yes. Oh, good. Take okay, it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then. Oh, yeah. Okay, nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Um, not a shoe, but what goes? Socks? Yes. Next. Jeez. God, we're good at this. Um. It goes on a table. It has a light, not a bowl. Lamp. Yes. God, we should do trivia together. Um, a sand. Castle. Yes. Jeez. Trivia. Here we come. This is too much fun. Uh, you read up. A book. Yes. Oh my God. Um, you take a mm, not a shower. Bath. Uh, but it's also two words. Hot tub. Mm, bath, and then second word. Bath, bath, I need more, I need more. Hot. 
Ta. And then the first. I'm lost. <laughs> you gotta help me. <laughs> you gotta help me. I take a bath. Oh, no, we ran out of time. Darn it! What is that? Thing? Bathtub. I said, but did I say bath? No, oh, you said bath. Bathtub. Bath okay. Dad, you know what? You have... I should get that. Okay. 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 <laughs> Okay, I'll go. Now you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So we'll time. Okay, let me put one on my head. Okay, and then. Okay. You ready? Oh, make sure you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, ready? okay. Okay, I'm gonna start this drill. Okay, okay. Okay. Um, a Philadelphia blank steak. Oh, cheese steak. Got it. Okay. Pumpkin, apple, strawberry rhubarb. Pie. Yes. Scrambled eggs. Oh, geez. Oh, no. Uh, oh, no. Come on. Movie theater, eating something, watching the movie. It's in a bag, has butter. Popcorn. Sandwich. You have something inside and the two things that go on the outside. Bread. Bread. That wasn't a very good one. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no. Um, we can do it. We can uh, do it. You cut it off of a tree. It's a beautiful fruit. Um, it's uh, very Big. sweet. It's not a coconut. Um, uh, I don't know my fruits. Uh, oh no, we ran out of time. You did? Yeah. Okay. So I don't get that one. I think that you was did. A pineapple. Oh. I didn't go I didn't fast enough for I, you. I didn't know pineapples came on trees. I just I only get them pre cut. On trees, right? I just get them from Wawa. Yeah. I just get them pineapples from Wawa. Trees, I just right? know they yeah. come from Wawa. Yeah. Well, I learned something new today. I did too. What did you learn? I learned that I should say bathtub instead of just tub. How do you like that? Well, at least <laughs> Do you I, want to do it again? We I, all? I mean, I don't know. Do we have enough time? Uh, okay, we have the right, let's do it again. Okay. Come on. Come on. I let's guess my game was good enough. All right. Now, are these We have you have to shuffle the cards though. Oh, I got to shuffle. I got to put my headband back on. I got to shuffle the cards. <laughs> and this this game. This Friday night's a little bit too wild for this, me. I was taking my headband off. This is a off. very wild. Friday yeah, it's, night. it's more wild than usually my yeah. Friday nights are. <laughs> did you, Did you know Steve Martin, a comedian? Yeah. I'm a wild and crazy guy. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you are. Okay. Yeah, you are definitely, right. definitely. You don't have to agree with me. I can, yes, I do. I definitely agree with you. Why are you guys <laughs> laughing? Yeah. Why are you laughing at him? I love him. Come on now. Come I'm on. sunshine. You are. Okay, you're my am I going first? Yeah, definitely. Okay. All right, let's, uh, you're going to do that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, ready? Okay. Go. Ready? Okay, go. Um, you sweep things up with it. Broom. Yes. Here you go. Um, rabbits eat it. Diamonds. Carrots. Have, yes. Jeez. That was a good, that was a oh, good. Oh, no, it's upside down. Um, is it upside down? It's okay. I know it. it's a fruit, and it's red. Um, in the Strawberry. South, they put salt on it. Um, it's red. <sighs> they put salt on it? Yes. In the South, we put beets, salt on beets. it. No, no. <sighs> Apple? Miss <laughs> Jenny, help me. It has, like, a green outside. Yeah, um, seeds yeah, seeds. Tomatoes? No. no. Oh, no. Yeah, they, I guess they have a festival. I put salt on it. I don't know. My grandmother grew oh, it. I don't know. I'm having a... Um, it's green on the outside, red on the inside. Oh, God. Beyonce I, says, I'd be drinking. I don't know. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, come on. Come on. We ran out of time. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, so I got two. Yeah. If you can't beat two. I'm sorry. I'll right. try my best. All right, let's go. Now it's your turn. Okay, okay, okay. okay. All right, you Hold ready? On. Yeah, I'm, I'm right, born ready. I was born ready. Here. Okay. Is it, my fingers are too right, humble. Ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, it's a fruit. It's red. Strawberry? Uh, yes. yes. That was easy. Um, there goes uh, my headband. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's a vegetable. It's an ear of corn. corn. Oh, wait, I saw that one in my bed. <laughs> They're nocturnal. They can turn their heads. Owl. Yeah. Um, the, the tortoise and the... Hair. Well, you know what? I screwed that up. You get that. You get that. I screwed that up. Oh, boy. Uh, oh, no. It's an animal in Africa. It has stripes. Tiger? Um, it's... Uh, Zebra. Yes. That was good. 
That was good because my my uh, hints were not that. Okay. <laughs> it's upside down. Oh, um, uh, they're on the North Pole. They, Polar bear. Yes. Watch out. Oh, wait, we ran out of time. Oh, what? Well, okay. the, I, I could do this one. Okay, it's the mascot it? for University of Richmond. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you could have got that? I don't know. It is the spiders, right? <laughs> is it the spiders? <laughs> the Richmond spiders. <laughs> I don't like that one. <laughs> I thought that was a good clue. Why is he laughing? I can't breathe. I need my hair. Well, on that note, come back anytime. I'm coming back. Did my mic just go? <laughs> on that note. Hey, thank you for it. Yeah. On a serious note, honest to God, thank you so much uh, to the audience. Uh, uh, our, our t my two sons and I had a blast, and uh, I, I will be back. Yes. I, hope I will so. be back. I hope so. Love you, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Well, we will be back next week. I don't know who the guest is yet. No one's answering my emails, but we will. We will be back next week. Even if it's yeah, I'll come back. I'll come back.